Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't it good to be in the house of the living God tonight? Amen. Amen. Been a long week already. Amen. I tell you what, why don't we stand to our feet? We're going to change. We're going to change for this week. How about that? I don't know about you, what you might have been through this week, but we're going to shift gears. Hallelujah. And we're going to change the way the rest of the week is going to flow. How about that? Amen. Let's get in one mind and one accord, and we're going to pray and ask God to be in our midst tonight. If he's not here tonight, this is just another meeting. I want him right smack dab in the middle. Hallelujah. Because where he is, things just don't stay the same. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, we come before you right now in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we invite your presence here today, God. We ask you to move like you've never moved before, oh God. Anoint our brother tonight, God, like he's never been anointed before. Let the word come forth in spirit and in truth. Give us an ear to hear and an open heart to receive your word. Change us, transform us, fill us and thrill us, and do us with power from on high. Thank you here tonight, oh God, in Jesus' precious name. Why don't you shout it? Amen. Let's worship together tonight. Amen. Okay, nobody do me like Jesus. Okay, nobody do me like the Lord. Okay, nobody do me like Jesus.
quick and in a hurry. We're going to ask Brother Benny if he would come on up. We're going to let him introduce himself. Maybe tell us, tell a little bit about himself. And we want him to have full range tonight. Amen. Whatever is on his heart, we want him to, to give the church of Ironton what they need. So let's give Brother Benny a warm Southern Ohio welcome here to Greater Faith. Amen. Amen. Come on, can we give that hand clap to the Lord right now? Hallelujah. Come on, He's worthy. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus, you're so good. You're so good. Ah, glory be unto your name, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. I feel such hunger and such faith in the house tonight. Amen. How many of you came into the house of the Lord with expectation tonight? Woo! Hallelujah. If you came for evaluation, you came with the wrong with the wrong agenda. But if you came with expectation, you came with the right agenda. And I believe in the Lord is going to speak and the Lord is going to move tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so honored to be with you. Uh, and just excited to be here. I, I feel like I'm here in the will of the Lord tonight, and I feel like the Lord has laid something on my heart to share with you. I apologize that my family was not able to come uh, with me tonight, uh, but they do send their warmest regards and greetings to you. If you would turn in the word of the Lord with me tonight to Numbers, Numbers chapter 9 and verse 18, Numbers chapter 9. And verse 18, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. I got here a few minutes early tonight and drove, just drove a few of the streets here around the church. And I'll just tell you that there's something stirring here in Ironton. I felt something stirring in this world. And I'm just telling you right now in the Holy Ghost that the Lord is positioning you for great things here in Ironton. Hallelujah. 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 Numbers chapter 9 and verse 18. If you have it, say amen. If you're cheating and you're looking at the screen, say amen. Amen. At the commandment of the Lord... The children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of the Lord they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. They rested in their tents. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we love you. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your house tonight with your people. Thankful, Lord, for the clarity of your word. Lord, for the precision of your spirit. Lord, I thank you for the faith that I feel in this atmosphere already here tonight. God, and I thank you in advance for every healing, for every outpouring, for every deliverance, and for every work that you are going to do in this house before we leave. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give the Lord one more hand clap as you're seated tonight? Praise the Lord. All right, there we go. Praise God. You can be seated. Thank you so much for standing for the reading of the Word. Uh, most of us know this story. If you've been in a church any, any length of time, you've heard of the journey of the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. And along that journey, the Lord used a cloud to lead them by day and a pillar of fire to lead them by night. And I want to I wanna turn your attention here to this the last phrase of this verse, it says, As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And, and my brother, he was opening the service tonight. He was not aware of what I was going to preach. But he said something already to confirm what the Lord had put in my spirit. And, and the Lord began to talk to me today. And he said, Where my presence is, there is rest. Where my presence is, there is rest. Oh, hallelujah. 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 
There is rest where the Spirit of the Lord is dwelling. And if there is no rest in your life, you have either done something to cause His presence to depart. Wow, hallelujah. You ever feel a distance between you and God? Let me tell you what I learned reading the book of Ezekiel. Mm, hallelujah. The Bible says that he, he does not compete. The Lord does not compete for our attention or for presence in our life. The Bible says it this way. There are no other gods beside him. And so when we allow things into our life that offend the holiness of God, that offend the righteousness of God, God does not remain where he is not welcome. And when we allow things into our life that displease God, expect a restlessness to settle into your spirit. Because the Lord will withdraw himself from an atmosphere that does not allow him to be God and God alone. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, the reason that we can feel restless in our spirit is when he is trying to move us forward. Ooh, hallelujah. We must discern when the Lord is ready for us to move forward. What's that mean? It means sometimes we get comfortable. Sometimes we get in a rut. We get in a pattern. And we think, just because I've always done it this way, that this way will always be good enough for me to finish my course. But I have learned that you can't take an old prayer life into a new season. And I have learned that if you want to go further and deeper with God, there are times where you have to expand your altar in your life. Hallelujah. And it is during those times where we try to hang on to the consecrations of yesterday when God is calling us deeper and we, we push against that sacrifice and we push against that consecration. What we do is we allow restlessness into our spirit. Why? Because the cloud has started to move and we are trying to remain in our tent. And there is a third reason when you can feel restless. And I would venture to say we've probably all been guilty of this. It's when we try to get ahead of the cloud. Ah. And I want to focus in here on reason number three tonight. Because I will tell you, as I sat at my desk this afternoon, the Lord spoke to me very clearly. And he said, tell the church in Ironton not to be restless. Tell them that my presence is with them now and not to move ahead of the cloud. Thus says the Lord unto you, church in Ironton, don't become restless where you are because the cloud is with you now. You don't have to move ahead of God. You don't have to feel pressured by circumstance and situation. You just wait. Wait for the cloud to move. If the cloud doesn't move, you don't move. But you stay in the perfect rest of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt restless at times when I've tried to outpace the cloud. Sometimes we make a mistake of trying to read our environment trying to read our circumstance rather than hear from the Lord. I've been serving God long enough to know many times when he speaks does not seem to match up with what my eyes see. 
The timing of God is His, and it is His alone. And I've got to rest until I hear Him say, Arise and move forward. We can destroy ourselves trying to get ahead of God. Just ask King Saul. He became restless. Why? Because it was time to sacrifice. It was time to give the offering. And the man of God wasn't where he was supposed to be when he was supposed to be there. And so Saul said, I feel a little restless in my spirit, so I'm going to take matters into my own hands and make decisions that I have not been authorized to make. And he destroyed himself because he wanted to get ahead of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was, uh, several months ago, I was driving to preach a revival and a pastor friend of mine called me and we began to talk on the phone and uh, is it alright if I walk around? I had a hard time standing still. <laughs> He began to talk to me on the phone and began to talk to me about some frustration that he was feeling in his spirit. Anybody ever felt frustrated before? Ah, ever feel like circumstances have you pinned in? You know where you want to go, but you're not sure how to get there. You know where you want to end up, but it feels like everything around you is fighting against you and you get a frustrated spirit. He said something like this. He said, it just feels like every time we start having revival, every time we get a little bit of momentum, every time we get some traction, something happens to mess it up. That's probably never happened in Ironton. But it happened where he was. And when he began to say that, the Lord dropped a word in my spirit. And I said, bro, you know what you're dealing with? I said, you're dealing with interruption. Interruption. How many of you like to be interrupted? Anybody in here got kids? Hallelujah. I got a 10-year-old boy. You may meet him someday. He's a professional interrupter. He's got his Ph.D. in interrupting. I could be on a Zoom call with leaders from all over the world, and he'll walk in, and whatever is going on in his life is more urgent and more important than anything else that is happening in that moment. That's how interruption works. It decides to be the most important thing that's happening at the moment. It doesn't take into account the big picture. It says, I am the most urgent need that requires your attention. And it doesn't care about the collateral damage that is caused when it comes on the scene. That's how interruption works. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 Interruption can be very dangerous if we don't know how to deal with it. Mm. Because interruption disrupts momentum. Interruption can leave things unfinished. Have you ever had stuff that's unfinished? Probably none of you have any projects around your house that have been sitting there a long time, right? You got a real good start. It's real exciting to go buy all the materials. It's real exciting to talk about. You know what you want it to look like, but six months later is in a whole lot of dust. And that project that was supposed to take a weekend is still undone. Why? What happened? Interruption happened. 
and you felt motivated and inspired at the beginning, but after interruption came in, it began to siphon away your virtue, and it began to steal your inspiration, and it began to cloud your vision, and now what once was inspirational just seems like a chore that you've got to get to. Let me tell you something right now. That's how the enemy wants you to feel about taking your city. He sends interruption after interruption after interruption. He wants to take your joy, your zeal, and your vision for Ironton. Hallelujah. I want you to go with me to John chapter 11. You know, y'all got me up here after just one song tonight. I was like, well, I guess they just want me to preach a long time. I don't I don't know. Hallelujah. That was my interpretation. I guess I'll find out afterwards. Let's see if I have the gift of discernment. Praise God. Go to John chapter 11. Start with verse 1. John chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. You ready? Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, where sister Martha was at Mary, which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister said unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, the sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that he saith to his disciples, Let us go unto Judea again. Mary and Martha were dealing with with a severe interruption, with a crisis, uninvited, unwelcome. And you know what they did? They responded appropriately. They did what you're supposed to do when crisis shows up in your life. They ran to Jesus for help. But what happened next, they were not expecting. They came to Jesus, and they said, Jesus, it's us, Mary and Martha. Our brother Lazarus, who you love, is sick. The Bible makes it a point to show us here. There is a context of relationship. There is a history here. Lord, it's not just anybody, it's us. I got a prayer closet. Me and you have a relationship. We have a history. We got some time behind us. We've been through some valleys and on some mountains together, Jesus. It's us. And we got an interruption that has come into our life. And we need you to intervene. Anybody ever approach God like that before? Try to use your relationship currency? God, it's me. I'm a tithe payer, first of all. Hallelujah. I pray. We got a history. Giving him all the reasons why he should respond right now. And they bring this crisis, this interruption to the Lord. And the Lord lifts his voice and says, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. You didn't hear it. They brought their crisis to God. 
And what Jesus did was he put a fence around their disaster. And so they would know that no matter what happens, from this moment forward, I got your problem fenced in. I already got a border on your disaster. So no matter what happens, from this day forward, I'm revealing to you the end of this thing. When this is all said and done, I'm going to get glory. When this is all said and done, the kingdom is going to be magnified. He told them the end, and he gave them the why. And then he did something that all of us have experienced. Nothing. They can't, you ever come to the altar and you got a word from God and the next day absolutely nothing changes. What happened to them? They got a word straight from Jesus. And he said, now I'm going to just go ahead and hang out here a couple more days. We got a real nice Airbnb here. I think we're just going to finish out our stay. And then he gets up. And comes running. No. He says, matter of fact, I think we're going to go check out Judea. Lord, it's me. It's Vinny. We got a history. And I got a crisis. And God says, you stay right there. I'm going to go deal with somebody over here who doesn't have a history. Who doesn't have... uh, I got something else over here that I'm going to do. I gave you a word. You just sit tight right there. Don't you become restless, Martha and Mary, with what you're dealing with. I've already told you how this thing is going to end. So don't you worry. Just trust in the word that I gave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's move down to verse 19. Many of the Jews. See, I was fast as you that time. Hallelujah. Many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary. All the people without Bibles are scrambling. You better hurry. Oh, I'm sorry. Many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Isn't that sweet? How nice of them. Let me tell you something. There will always be people that will help you feel comfortable living outside the border of promise that God gave to you. Mm. You know what I believe? I believe that when the Lord showed up that day, He expected to find Martha and Mary waiting on a miracle. Mm. Well, that's not what happened. Let's read verse 20. Then Martha, as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. You know what Mary this was? This was the same Mary that wouldn't leave his side and was sitting at his feet. Ah, remember when I told you interruption's dangerous? This is how, right here. Because if you don't know how to handle interruption... It'll damage and break your spirit. And one day you're in an intimate relationship with Jesus. And the next day you're sitting inside the house waiting on a special invitation when somebody tells you that Jesus is coming by your way. Don't you allow in don't you allow interruption to break your spirit. I'm telling you right now, your day's coming. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Jesus has his perfect time. Timing, uh, in alignment. Uh, he's got an answer uh, in the waiting for you. Hallelujah. He said, Martha, unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. 
Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus saith unto her, I am the Makaya. I am the I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever, whosoever, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He said, Martha, I allowed interruption to come into your life because incorruptions bring revelations. Sometimes God allows an interruption to bring a disruption because he's got a revelation that he wants to release into your life. Martha got a revelation that day of just exactly who Jesus was. Interruptions lead to revelations. God reveals himself in every interruption in our life. And not only that, Interruptions lead to resurrections. Just about the time you're ready to raise the white flag and give up and say enough's enough. God says, now's my moment. Now's my time. I'm going to come in and show you the God that you serve. I'm going to reveal to you just how great I really am. I'm going to reveal to you just how big I really am. Interruptions lead to revival. You didn't get that one, but you got it. There was an interruption that his disciples experienced. And it seemed like all hope was lost. Felt like the curtains were drawn. And nothing else was ever going to happen. But Peter, Acts chapter 2, verse 14, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Let me tell you right now, there will be a moment in every interruption where God sends somebody to give you a word of clarity and say, open your ears, because right now is the moment that I'm getting ready to show up. Peter stood up with the eleven. He lifted up his voice. He said, attention, everybody. I know you're distraught. I know you're broken. I know you're feeling down and out, but you better pay attention because something is happening. A promise that he told us about is getting ready to be revealed. He said, you men of Judea. He was doing something in Judea, wasn't he? Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Let me tell you right now, I know you're suffering. I know you're struggling. I know you're going through interruption. But baby, hold on because revival follows interruption. Outpouring follows interruption. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah, let me sit down. Let me Acts 17, 5 and 6. But the Jews which believe not 
moved with envy, took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. Something right now. I'm in the Holy Ghost. I'm bringing you a ream of word tonight. And I'm challenging this church to hear it. Because what you're going through in this season is not for naught. God is going to get the glory. And when this is all said and done, there's going to be a book of Acts revival in the city of Ironton. You hear this preacher right now. You write the vision and make it plain upon tables. That he that readeth it uh, may run. Hey, they came looking for Paul in Jason's house, and they couldn't find him. So they go Jason in the street, and they beat him, and they brought him in front of the magistrate, and they said, "This be one of those that turned this world upside down." I'm telling you right now, you're going to turn your city upside down. There is a revival coming that no man can stop. God is doing a sovereign work. It's not going to be through program, process, or initiative. But I'm telling you right now, you better get ready. Because the Spirit of the Lord is getting ready to descend in this city. And you are going to see a mighty and great outpouring of the Holy Ghost and fire. Talking to my pastor friend on the phone. And I told him, I said, You're experiencing an interruption. The Lord got the word in my spirit. And here was the word that the Lord gave me. He said, Resurgence. Resurgence. He said, Tell him there's going to be a resurgence. And in my office this afternoon, the Lord said, I want you to go to Ironton and tell them not to be restless because there is a resurgence that is... For anybody who was unimpressed by that, let me read you the definition of resurgence. A continuing after interruption. Ah, a renewal, a restoration to use, activity, and revival. The act of rising again or resurrection. I didn't make that up. That's in the dictionary. The act of rising again or resurrection. Hey, Ironton, I said everything to say this. There is a resurgence. There is a resurgence. Don't you become restless in your tent because the Lord is with you. The Lord is keeping you. And there will be a resurgence in the church. Hallelujah. Come on, would you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you're going to have a Thessalonica revival. You're going to turn this city upside down. Uh, 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 you're going to have an Ephesus revival. Uh, you know what happened in Ephesus? Ephesus had a whole bunch of idols. Their entire economy revolved around idol worship. 
You know what an idol is? It's something that demands your time, your attention, your energy, and your money. Don't think that an idol is just a little statue on your mantle. Depression can be an idol. Alcohol can be an idol. Pornography can be an idol. Anxiety can be an idol. Gossip can be an idol. So in this court, can be an idol in your life, whatever it is. The revival that came to Ephesus was so strong and so powerful. You know what happened? People stopped by an idol. And they started putting businesses out of business. And the idol, you need to hear me right now. You think about what an Ephesus revival would do in Ironton. They changed the entire economy in that city when they had revival. What's that mean? It means bars shut down. It means drug houses closed up. He put a person in my country. That's an emphasis revival. When idols can't stay because the money moves a different way. Tell you something. God has not forgotten Ironton. I'm t- I feel the prophetic on me tonight. There will be an Ephesus revival in this city before that trumpet sounds. You will see a shift in the economy of this city. I was in Eureka, California just a couple weeks ago. And this guy came in on a Monday night. Can you believe that? We've been church on Monday. Who does that? On a Monday night, this guy came in. You know what? He had a real nice buzz going. He'd come from the bar. He had alcohol on his breath. But he was hungry for Jesus. And I said, is there anybody here who needs the Holy Ghost. And he came up. And I looked at the minister kid there. I said, I'll cover this one, all right? I want you to be responsible. This will be my fault. This goes crazy. And I start praying for this guy. I'm telling you right now, first of all, God filled him with the Holy Ghost. And then he said, I want to be baptized in Jesus. And I was, you know what I was thinking? And I was so carnal. I was like, well, I wonder if that'll stick. That's what you think when somebody's drunk in the altar. But it did stick. Because the next day, he went to his little watering hole where he goes every single day and he walked in just like Peter and lifted his voice so everybody there could hear him. He said, just want y'all to know you're not getting one more dollar of my money because I found something that's better than i thought. That's how an emphasis revival starts. It starts with one person saying, I'm done serving that idol in my life. How many of you believe tonight that God's got a resurgence in Ireland? If you believe that, I'm going to ask you to come forward. Got one more. Keep on coming. I got one more illustration. I want to talk to you about J. Iris and his daughter. J. Iris' daughter was sick dealing with interruption. And Jesus said, all right, Jairus, I'm coming. But along the way, well, everybody wanted Jesus' attention. 
they begin to throng him, surround him. It's where the lady with the issue of blood, the Bible says, came in to press behind and touched his garment and virtue floated. And I thought in my mind, poor Jay Iris is standing there the whole time, <laughs> thinking, my daughter, she's only got moments, she's only got days. She's only got a limited amount of time. And here, here, no, Jesus couldn't even go uh, through a town without being surrounded. And the whole time, J. Iris has life and death on his mind. Mark 5, 35 and 36. Oh, nobody back there now. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Jairus, thy daughter, is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something right now. Some of you have dealt with interruption that has been in your life so long uh, that the enemy has whispered these e these words in your ear uh, and said, why are you even praying about that? Uh, why don't you just let it go? Uh, why are you bothering God about that? Uh, this situation is way too far gone uh, for God to intervene. Listen to what Jesus said. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was for, let me tell you something, God will not stand for a bad report. He saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. And this is exactly what the Lord told me to end this service with tonight. He said, tell them, be not afraid, only believe. He knows where you are. He has not lost sight of you. Be not afraid, only believe. Don't you allow restlessness to pressure you into a mistake. Only believe. Trust in the timing of the Lord. Come on, I think it'd be good if we just lift our hands right now and begin to receive this word. Begin to receive it personally and begin to receive it corporately. I speak life into every spirit. I speak healing into the fractured faith of Mary. I prophesy resurgence and I I prophesy resurgence of joy, a resurgence of the days, a resurgence of revival, a resurgence of deliverance, a resurgence of the miraculous, a resurgence of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And John chapter 3, verse 5 says, Unless a man is born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Being born of the water is baptism in Jesus' name. Being born of the Spirit is the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. If you're in this house tonight and you have never been baptized in Jesus' name or you have never been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can have it before you leave here tonight. God wants to give it to you before you leave here tonight. This past Sunday night, I was in a church in Old Virginia, had severe autism. I asked, I said, is there anybody here that needs the Holy Ghost? And you're sitting probably 70% of the way back. He's just sitting there in his pajama pants. And he lifted his hand and said, I need the Holy Ghost. I'm going to die. 
And me and another brother went back there and prayed for him. And God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. God can fill anybody with the Holy Ghost. For anybody in this room tonight, you have never received the gift of the Holy Ghost from the evidence of speaking in other tongues. But you want to receive it before you leave here tonight. That you would you just slip a hand in the air? Is there anybody here? Anybody here? Hallelujah! 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 I can feel you on a Wednesday night. Is there anybody in here tonight who's never been baptized in Jesus? And you would like to be baptized in Jesus before you leave here tonight? I want you to slip up a hand. And let me just say one thing. If you were ever baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I got good news and bad news. The bad news is, is all you did was get wet. Because nowhere in the Bible was anybody ever baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They were always baptized in His name, which is Jesus. And Acts 19 gives us a precedent for being rebaptized if you were incorrectly baptized the first time. So if you need to be rebaptized in Jesus' name, we can baptize you tonight. Is there anybody here that needs to be baptized tonight before they leave? I don't see any hands. Does that mean we're all going over to glory together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on. Come on, I want you to take a minute and just give the Lord some praise right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be unto your name, Jesus. Hey, I think it'd be good if we just rejoice for a moment. It's what I feel in my spirit that we ought to rejoice right now. And let the Lord know that we're content in this word. We're content in this promise. We're not going to move ahead of God, but we're going to trust him. Sing it on down, sing it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Sing it on down, sing it on down. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. Sing it on down, sing it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Sing it on down, sing it on down. Lord, let your Holy Ghost come on down. Sing it on down, sing it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Sing it on down, sing it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. Lord, we're your children, and we are asking for you to send the fire. Our hearts are hungry, our spirits are thirsty. We need to feel your power. And just like the prophet, he said it would be in the last days, and now for it we'll see. So, Lord, we are waiting, and we're anticipating. So, Lord, won't you send your Holy Ghost down? 